So when she, she was born a few weeks early, um, the problem is basically that the top chambers are not communicating with the bottom chambers of the heart. Um, and as a result, her heart rate was much lower, much slower than it should be. Um, so yeah, she actually needed a pacemaker implanted shortly after she was born. Um, in fact, it would have been before most kids are even out of the womb, she was, <laughs> she was undergoing surgery to have the pacemaker implanted. When she was almost three years old, it was time to replace the pacemaker because the battery had run low. So um, she was also born with a hole in her heart. Um, and so we decided to um, basically do the pacemaker upgrade and close the hole in her heart at the same time, which was um, in March of, of this year. Shortly after her surgery, it became apparent that she was not uh, their heart wasn't keeping up um, and at that point um, there were discussions about ECMO. Um, ECMO basically has the ability to um, temporarily sort of take the place of both the heart and the lungs if necessary um, while the heart recovers uh, from whatever may have may have happened. I remember kind of said life support and then they gave me like the the side effects and I said just do what you gotta do to save her. I don't really care. And it was I don't remember how long it was till we got to see her again. Felt like an eternity. We were here a total of ten weeks. Yeah her lungs took about two, two and a half weeks to heal. Then a side effect from echo can be uh, clots forming and she had two clots form in her heart which then caused an infection so we had six weeks worth of antibiotics IV antibiotics we had to do say bye <laughs> kind of glad that we're in the bigger number so that you know Everybody knows how to use the machine. <laughs> but then you're saddened because a thousand people, you know, needed it before her.